I have many, many <laughs> information here. But it is the center of God's wills. All right? And I want to preach this morning in Exodus 19. Uh, 32 verse 19. This is will be the main the main verse from this message. Exodus 32:19. When Moses approached to the camp and saw the calf and the dancing, his anger burned, burned and he threw the tables out of his hands, breaking them to pieces at the foot of the mountain. Amen? So, before I start preaching from the Bible, I had a study that I want you guys to make, to understand where we're going to get those two pieces together. Amen? So, I want to talk about uh, gra gravity. All right? Uh, if you are young, you might remember this. If you're old, it will be a few years ago. <laughs> but anyway, we need to remember this to get into the message. All right? So gravity is a force that attracts the body toward the center of the earth or toward any other physical body having mass. Right? That's the definition of a gravity. The degree of intensity of this is measured by acceleration. Sir Isaac Newton described gravity as the mutual attraction between two bodies in the universe. This phenomenon is not 100% clear to the scientists. Or what I, what, what I want to say to you guys this morning, as human beings, we are cu curious. We want to find out things. But we are going to find out just to a certain point that God lets us find. Sometimes you want to understand everything that God does to your life, but you're not going to find it. God let you do it just to this point. After that, it's not up to us. It's up to him. Amen? So when you remove or add a body at a certain geographic point, the force will suffer alterations. How that happened? has been a question for many years. Uh, they are studying, studying, and studying the Earth. We find solutions to many questions, but many we cannot find. I, give, I want to give it to you guys an example that there is a study in Italy about a cave called Grotta Gigante. <laughs> That's the name of the cave, all right? And that cave, it has less gravity than anywhere else in the world. For example, if you put right on top of that cave a car that weighs a 1,000 a pounds, just in that place, that car will, le will weigh less, uh, five pounds less than anywhere else in the world. Just in that place. How can we explain this? They are trying to, but they can. All right? Everybody's with me? <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah. Also, the cycle of the moon and the sun affect the Earth's gravity. The Earth contracts and expands, changing form according to the changes in gravity. Or let's, let's picture this. We have the solar system. We have the sun and now the planets. Everything goes around the sun, right? And the earth spins around and still going around the sun. Okay? Everybody remember that? <laughs> Amen? And doing that movement by the sun and the moon, our earth, it changes form, expands, and contracts. Amen? So 
So think about everything that I said. And now think about God. Who created everything. He created the earth. The solar system. Everything I'm talking about this morning. He's the one who created. Amen. So I want to make sure this morning you guys are going to live this place. Knowing that revolution does not exist. <laughs> All right. Creation. That's our God. Amen. How can you. I, I'm just. This is my point. How people can think about. People, uh, revolution. If everything makes sense in God's wills. Everything is about a center. About. Uh, that's where we're going to get in the message. That it has to be a center that everything else is going around and work in the perfect will. Amen? Uh, more information about the earth. The earth has a polar diameter in, of about 7,898 miles and an equatorial diameter of about 7,924 miles. All right? The atmosphere of the Earth is almost 2,000 miles, but more than half of your way is accounted for by the gravity in the first four miles of a atmosphere closest to the Earth's surface. All right, so if you think about the atmosphere, on the first four miles, it's concentrated all that uh, gravity. And everything else is 300 something, 200 miles. So after that, it doesn't attract too much. So that's how God created our Earth. Everything attracts, attracts to the center. All right? Hallelujah. So the atmosphere is a, a magnet field. All right? That's how we live in this place. That's how we can survive on Earth. Because the middle is really hot. I'm going to talk about this now. Uh, no, I'm not there yet. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to explain a couple things to you guys. Um, how to measure the force of gravity. Any object, any body, any, anybody you have, you can hang from one side and another side. And you can draw two lines. All right, so you, can, you, can you guys hear me? <laughs> you're going to draw two lines. If you hold this way, you're going to draw a line. If you hold this way, you're going to draw a line. The point that both lines get together, that's the center of gravity of any object. All right? Everybody understood that? So now, now that's something really curious to you guys. Uh, if you are married or not. <laughs> this is my ring. If you do the gravity center in my ring, it's off the body. All right? I'm going to draw the line. Anywhere I can hang on my ring will be right in the middle. So that will be the center of the gravity of my ring, right in the middle of the body. How can you explain this? I can. <laughs> My God created. Amen. So, the nucleus of the earth is composed mostly of liquid, liquid iron. And the temperature is over 7,300 degrees Fahrenheit. It is by far the hottest part of the earth. Its heat spreads to cause the other layers 
to be up to 2,700 degrees. Or let me explain this a little bit, just make it easier. We have the Earth, all right? Right in the middle has 7,300 degrees. Just the solid part is like really in the middle. And everything else, like a big piece, has 2,700 degrees. So everything concentrated is in the middle of the Earth, the hottest part. And when it spins around, makes the atmosphere that attract us to the Earth. Amen? That explains why the Earth has a magnet field. So now... Everybody's understanding this? Amen? Hold on one second. I'm going to start preaching. <laughs> so think about this. Earth has a nucleus. It will be the center. All right? The solar system has a sun. And the sun has will be the center. All right? A man has a heart. The heart has to be the center. And how can I explain this to you guys? Remember how we measure the center of gravity? If you hang me or you by your arm, your legs, from the side, the middle of the center of gravity of our body will be the heart. Amen? So... Now I want you to think, this is coincidence or fact that God created everything in a certain way? So today, this morning, I want you to live here that knowing God has a plan, that's how he created things, everything to the center, all right? And that's how he works, not revolution, <laughs> amen? Amen. So everything has a center, and God has to be our center. If he is our center, everything is going to work out fine. Amen? Okay. Now I'm going to start preaching. Let's go to the Bible. What God really wants from us? John 6.40. John 6.40. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life and I will raise him up his last day. Amen. That's what God wants from us. He wants to save me. He wants to save us. That's the main thing. So if you try, what do you have to do to be the center of God's wills? You have to follow him, to follow the scriptures. You have to stay in a position that he demands you to stay. Amen? So, that's what God wants from us. Now let's go back to the main scripture. In, let's talk, let's talk about, uh, about Moses a little bit. Uh, Exodus 32, 7 and 8. Thirty two seven and 8. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go get this down for the people which... My verse is different. <laughs> Go down because your people who won't brought you up out of Egypt have become corrupt. They have been quick to turn away from what I command. Then I have made themselves an idol cast in the shape of a calf. All right? So... 
I want to I wanna talk about Moses. He was praying. He was up in the mountain to bless the people, to bless everybody who was there. And what happened? Everybody who was down there turned his back around, starting having fun, having fun, parties all the time, and forget about everything about God. And this is the revelation that God gave it to me. When Moses broke those tablets, those tablets were descriptions. Those tablets were the most blessed that people can have it, a person can have it. There was your salvation. There was the Bible in that time. If they followed those tablets, those rules, they will be saved. And God himself delivered that to them. And they turned around. They were ready to take the blessing. They were too busy having fun. They, are, they were too busy having good times and parties with friends. And forgot about God. So this morning, let's remember about this. Let's give our first to God. Let's stay in his presence. All right? Hallelujah. The Lord's his presence is so great over here right now. I can feel it. It's amazing. That's the way I preach. I'm a kind of slow. I like to take my time and explain things. So I will not be jumping up and down. <laughs> But I want to make sure you guys understand those words this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. So, in that verse 32 8, Moses was in God's presence, and God let him know what was going on down there in the midst of the people, what he had to do. So, when Moses was there praying and in the Lord's presence. Everything was going on down there, God told him. So what makes me think that if you are in God's presence, it doesn't matter what people are doing. It doesn't matter if they are trying against something against you. He will let you know. And he's going to tell you what to do. He's going to let you know and tell you what to do. To deal with those problems. Amen? So just, just take care. Just trust in the Lord. And he has everything planned to your life. Amen? The verse 9 to 14. I love this part. 11 to 14. I mean, 9 to 14. I'm sorry. I have seen these people, Lord said to Moses, and they are stiff-necked people. Now leave me alone so that my anger might burn against them, and that may destroy them. Then I will make you into a new great nation. But Moses saw the favor of the Lord God, his God. O oh Lord, he said, why should your anger burn against your people? Who you brought out of Egypt with great power and mighty hand. But would be the Egyptians say it was with evil, evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to wipe them off the face of the earth. Turn from your fears, anger, Relent and do not bring disaster on our people. 13. Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. All right? So right here we see another moment that God once again wants to destroy the people. Wipe them off. Okay, you guys are not doing... And you guys are doing everything wrong. I'm going to just 
start over again, just like he did with Noah. All right? Everything was wrong. Uh, I think it's 6.13 on uh, Genesis. I'm not going to read. That's fine. But 6.13, I think, on Genesis, it says that Noah was the chosen one to build the ark and save all, the pe all his family and the animals because everything else in the earth wasn't good to the Lord's eyes. And now, once again, let's say the word, we screw it up again. And he wants to do the same thing. He wants to erase the human beings. Just keep Moses and do a new generation from that. But Moses had to remember him. What about the promise that you made to Abraham or Isaac and Israel? So instead he erased and everything, he kept his promises. That's the God we served. He could delete everything on earth and start over again. But he made a promise to one man. And because of one man, he didn't do that again. So if God promises anything to you, don't worry about it. He will do it. He will do it. It is, if you are one man or one woman, one girl, don't worry about it. <laughs> he will do it. You know, we are not less, we are not better, or we are not better, or, or You know, Abraham, he's our father of faith. But God looks at you the same way. He loves you the same way. He's not looking what he did. He's not looking how great he was. But he's looking at you the way you can be. How better you can be. He wants to, say, like I said, he wants to save your life. And he promised you something. He will do it. Don't worry. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 15, 16. Moses turned and went out to the man with the two tablets of testimony in his hands. They were inscribed on both sides, front and back. The tablets were the work of God. The writing was the writing of God engraved on the tablets. Now think with me how big, how great was that blessing. God wrote them down with his hands. Can you imagine you receive a blessing from God? He specially wrote down everything to you. Look at what those people missed when they turned his, their back to the Lord. All right? Hallelujah. Exodus 33, 11. 33, 11. The Lord would speak to Moses face to face. As a man speaks with his friend, then Moses will, would return to the camp. But his young guide, Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. So right now, let's start putting this message together. Can we imagine you going to the prayer and the God, our God, Jesus Christ, will be right there with you. As your great friend, as a man on your side that does everything to you, even write down something that will save your soul, like a Bible. Can you imagine a God and a, a relationship with God like that, like Moses had? That's where I want to put this message together. We read about gravity, about the center of the earth. 
And Moses was in the center of God's wills. Everything was working right for him. He was doing whatever God wants him to do. The same way it happened in our planet. The same thing happens in our life. If you are right there when God wants you to be, everything around you is going to work perfectly fine. If something is going wrong, just step back and think what I'm doing wrong. Step back for a few minutes and like think about your life. And think about what you're doing that God is not, com fulfill, uh, is not completely everything he has to your life. Amen? Hallelujah. 34. Uh, no, it's still 33, 17. 33, 17. I will do very thing you have asked because I'm pleased with you and I know you by name. Can you imagine? Now close your eyes for a few minutes. Just close your eyes and think about God calling you by your name, saying that you are his best friend. I know you by your name and everything you asked me. I'm going to do it because you please me. Can you imagine you have that relationship with God? Oh, Lord, I want that to my life. I want to be like Moses was to your eyes. I want to be that in your eyes, God. I want to be like that. I want to have that same relationship. I want to be your best friend. I want to love you the way Moses loved you. He was guiding those people to the Egypt. They turned his back, but he stays straight. He's going forward, not turning around, and just doing everything that God wants him to do. It doesn't matter what happened on his side. It doesn't matter what happened on the left, on the right, in front of him. It doesn't matter anything. He was there. Doing God's works. That's how I want to do it. That's what I want for my life. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 22 says, When my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand. And you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. So Moses now asked God to see his glory. But, you know, God said, this is too much. You can handle it. But I'll let you going to see a little bit, you know. So picture this. God walking by the mountains. All right. Put his hand. Okay, you can, you're not going to see this. So I'm gonna, he's going to put his hand between the mountain and he's going to walk by turn his back now you can see it and what happened with Moses his face was so bright so bright that nobody could look at him face to face when he came down now another revelation for you even if God turned his back to you turn around and turn his back to you He's blessing you. He is blessing you. It doesn't matter. He, he doesn't have to stand up his hands, stand his hands and give it to you. He doesn't have to look in your eyes. He's so great that he can turn his back and bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Plus, just think about Everything we, we have been reading right now, every little thing that Moses asked God, he did it. Everything he asked, God gave to him. This is the relationship that our church, that we need 
to have with God. Amen? Now, 34 first. 34 first say that, Lord say to Moses, Chisewal, uh, two stone tablet like the first ones, and I will write on them the works that were on the first tablets which you broke. That makes me think, People did not receive their blessing on the first time because they were sinners. They were doing everything wrong. But right now, on the next, next chapter, the blessing is still there. The blessing is still there. He wants to deliver to the people. So he's giving a second chance. How many people this night need this morning needs a second chance. How many times we need a second chance? I think we need a second chance every day. Every day there's something wrong. <laughs> and, you know, if you don't watch out, you're going lose your, your, you're gonna lose yourself. So we need a second chance every time. And that's the God we served. We're serving right here this morning. He has a second chance to your life. He has a second chance right now. It doesn't matter if you miss the first one. He can do over and over and over again because he loves you. Amen? 34, 17. No, I'm sorry, 10. Then the Lord said, I'm making a covenant with you before all people. I will do Wonders never before done in any nation in all the world. The people you live among with will see how awesome is the work that I am the Lord will do it for you. So, again, one more time. He's delivering such a blast to Moses. That he's going to do amazing things in his life. That people will see the God he serves. So think with me. Moses was a man that was doing everything that God wants to. But his time, it's passed by. Now it's our turn. Now it's my turn and your turn. Why, what makes you think that God cannot do the same thing with my life and your life? Nothing. If you pay the price that Moses paid, God will do it. God will do it. It's, was up, it's up to me and you to pay the price. See how many promises, how many blessings... We just read this morning that God had to Moses and he fulfilled all of them. And what about my and yours? How many promises he made to your life and my life? Some are, you, you already received, but some not. And we can receive. Maybe I, I did something wrong, that's why I did not receive. But my blessing is still there, like we just read. It's still there. I have a second chance. I can still receive that blessing. Amen? 3428. Moses was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights without eating bread or drinking water. And he wrote on the tablets the words of government and the Ten Commandments. Did you guys see the price? Are you willing to pay that price? <laughs> Let's read that again. Moses was there with the Lord 40 days, 40 nights, without eating bread or, drink or drinking water. And he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant and the Ten Commandments. Are you ready to pay 
the price. 40 days, 40 nights, no bread, no water. There's a price to be paid. If you want that kind of relationship with God, that's a price to pay for. Amen? But God's going to honor you. He's going to bless you such a way that you cannot even imagine if you do it. It is a high price look in our eyes like a man's eyes. It is really high price. How can I stay 40 days? How can I do things like that? But what about Jesus Christ? What price he paid? What about his life? He paid so... <laughs> There's no price for that. It's his own life for me and you. That's why we have a chance to be here this morning. Worship. Sing to him. Clap our hands. Feel the Holy Spirit. This is amazing. This is awesome. Like said that. This is awesome. And we are here because he did to us. He saved us. He saved us. Amen. I'm almost done. I just want to say a couple of things. I want to say that in Daniel 6, 4. Daniel 6, 4. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, the kingdom, but they couldn't find none occasion nor fault for as much as he faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Another man, another man who was serving God, another man who was really in the God's, the center of God's wills, Daniel. They try to find anything wrong on him. They try to point fingers on him, but they couldn't. That's the man, that's the woman we need to be. We need to be that kind of person these days. People will try to point fingers on you, but we have our great God watching our back. Amen? And when you have that kind of relationship with God, this is what's going to happen in your life also. When you're serving God, how many times do you remember that you're ser serving God with your whole heart? You're giving your best in the Lord's house. And then everything else turns against you. People are trying to go against your life. That happened to him. But just remember that one we have in our life, it's bigger than any problem. Our Lord's bigger. Jesus Christ is bigger than anything. Amen. Hallelujah. And I want to, in Acts 9, I'm not going to read the whole thing. But 9, first. And you can read that at home. It's going to talk a little bit about... Paul, that's another man who changed his life by following Jesus Christ. He was doing everything wrong. He was a man who used to pursue the Christians, and God changed his life. And once for all, he starts serving God. All the blessings came to his house. Amen? So that's what I want you to encourage this morning. I want all of you, I want myself to be in the center of God's wills. I want to be the greatest, the best I can be. Because if you think about it, you're just a tool in God's hands. You're here to do His work. And I always think, you, you, hear, you hear a lot of people saying that. But think about a screwdriver. It's a simple tool. It's just simple, but you need that for pretty much everything. Everything you're going to do, you need a screwdriver. And let me be that screwdriver in God's hands. You know, will be some certain part in your life that God's going to use you like a screwdriver. It needs everywhere. 
Everywhere needs a screwdriver. So be one. Let God use you. Amen? Okay, Pastor. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Raphael. That was wonderful. Unfortunately, in, the, in this world, there are some Phillips head screwdrivers. And they're a little bit different. And as, as, as Brother Raphael was just sharing about fasting 40 days to get closer to the Lord, <clears throat> I felt to just kind of give you a little instruction. Don't go out and start fasting 40 days unless the Lord gives you that mandate because you will not last. You will die. Seriously. It's a very serious thing. I've been in some churches where people tried to fast in 40 days and they got very, very sick. You have to be led by the Spirit of God to do that. But I want to say this. I want to add a, another revelation to what our brother was just sharing uh, today. Uh, in, in Matthew, and Brother Tom, if you will, put this up for me. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, because I want to read this to you because some of you may feel, well, gee, if I don't fast 40 days, I can't be in God's presence. But I want to just share this with you. It says, then was Jesus led up to the spirit into the wilderness and be tempted of the devil. Verse 2. And he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights and was after hungered. Not only did Jesus, not only is our salvation free. By his grace, we are saved through faith. But your access into God's presence is because Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights. The Bible says that we may come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain grace and mercy in time of need. Jesus, we sing this song, paid it all. Not only did he pay for our sins, but he paid the way for the access back to the Father. You say, how do you know that? Pastor, how is that scriptural? Because when he was on the cross, the Bible says that the, the veil of the temple was torn in half. The, the veil that was there was between the holy place and the holy of holies. And in the temple of Israel, only the high priest could enter into the holy place. The priest could not, just the, just the high priest was allowed. But when Jesus died on that cross in that temple, that, 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 that veil that separated between the holy place and the holy of holies was rent in two. Which was symbolic of that Jesus, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way into the Father's presence. And so, praise God. We have to pay a price, though. You, you, I always talk about that. And, and Brother Raphael's right. We have to pay the price and that price is to die on the cross, put self on the cross, die to self. And as we die to self, we get into the very presence of God in a greater dimension, in a greater way. Amen? Well, everything comes through the cross. Everything God has done is done through the cross. Walking in the Spirit is done through the cross. The Holy Spirit will lead you to the cross. So that self can be there and, and self can be, uh, uh, if I can say, not eliminated, but self can be put under, you know. And, and so I want to encourage you today. If the Lord says fast, begin with one day. Fast that day. And then if you want to get into a discipline of fasting, go into three days. Or you can go every other day. See, the, the, the problem with fasting today is people don't have any time. They got to go to work. And that's very difficult to do because I believe when you fast, that time that is dedicated for fasting, you don't do anything else. You don't watch TV. You don't play video games. You don't go shopping. You don't go driving down to the beach. You, you, you know, you, that time you fast is time of seclusion between you and God and you close yourself in with God and to do that for 40 days is kind of difficult today unless God calls you then you need to go away somewhere 
Amen. And that's the best way is to go away on a retreat somewhere, go for 40 days and just spend time like they do in Africa. When up in Nigeria, what they do, brother, is they go up into the mountains and they stay there 30 days, 40 days up into the mountains. The literal mountains, they go up and they, they stay in the mountains for 30 or 40 days. And I don't know if you know this or not, but I heard this one time, that if you look at the globe and you look down at Jerusalem, that Jerusalem is the center point of all the earth. Jerusalem is the center. And it's out of Jerusalem. It's out of that center of God's will. That's where Jesus came. And not only that, that's where Jesus is coming back. Praise God. Well, thank you, Brother Raphael and sister. That was wonderful. We enjoyed your coming and enjoyed the word. Praise God. Hallelujah.